was worth doing a small vlog just on this because we were on the 415 ferry from Athens to Aegina. The ferry was called Agios Nectarios. About 10 miles out and about halfway along our journey, we heard some screaming. Then we realised that there was a person in the water. It's very difficult to see someone at sea. They can get easily lost and if they start going under the water, then you can lose sight of them. The first thing that we did was we all pointed at the person and then we made sure that the captain knew that there was somebody in the water. The ferry, obviously because it's such a big ferry, it was travelling at quite a high speed and it takes a while to slow down and the turning circle is quite large. There's a man in the water. So our ferries turn round to go and um, we'll see if he's alright. As we got closer to the person we realised that it was a woman. It seems strange that there was someone in the water so far out. It wasn't anywhere near a beach and we didn't see a boat searching for someone. It was a major shipping channel so maybe she came off a large ship. So as the ferry that we were on got closer to her, they threw a life ring in. The life ring um, didn't reach her at first so they prepared to throw it again and this time the life ring got closer so she was able to swim over to it. As somebody was pulling her in on the life ring they lowered a couple of rope ladders. Such a large ship they didn't reach the water's surface exactly. One of the crew members climbed down the ladder and tried to help her get onto the ladder but she didn't have enough energy or strength. She was unable to get onto the ladder to climb up it. The woman was conscious, um, she looked pale. I think as the boat maybe was lifting up and down on the swell it created an effect where she was kind of getting sucked down a little bit. So that when the crew realised that she was unable to get onto the ladder a high-speed boat arrived to provide assistance but this boat had quite high sides to it. Eventually they um, had a plan that they were going to lower the ramp as that would make it easier to get her into the ferry. So a crew member jumped into the water and he pulled her around while she was in the life ring round to the aft part of the ferry. A group of crew members managed to hoist her onto the ramp. It was difficult to get her out of the water even onto the ramp because the ferry was still going up and down slightly with the swell and she didn't seem to have any energy so it really was a case of them um, using all their strength to pull her onto the ferry. When she was finally um, dragged onto the ramp she didn't seem to have any energy, she wasn't able to get up. I didn't know if anyone um, was able to do any first aid so I remained um, close to, to the casualty just in case they required any assistance. So I just um, observed and um, I noticed that she was breathing and she was able to talk. Um, they did put her into um, a recovery position. Um, I noticed that she um, was vomiting. She seemed very cold. She was able to speak. My main concerns were how her condition might deteriorate after a rescue. The woman was transferred onto the red high-speed powerboat that had been um, standing by.
I think their plan was to um, transfer her to the Coast Guard boat that also arrived. probably decided that it was um, unsafe because there was some swell. I was also concerned about how her condition might deteriorate after she was put onto the high speed boat and who was going to look after her then. When the woman was transferred onto the high speed boat, um, we continued on our journey. Yeah, so someone discovered there was someone in the water, a person in the water. So we all started shouting and pointing and someone ran up to tell the skipper. So they turned the ferry round and um, managed to eventually get her into the boat with a lot of difficulty because obviously she'd been in the water for a while, she had no energy left, she was cold and um, the ladder didn't go right into the water so she couldn't, she didn't have the strength to even pull herself up and then um, yeah they brought her around, eventually someone dived in with her and took her around to the back and they lowered the ramp that gets the boats in and they managed to finally get her on there and they dragged her in and then you know she was conscious and she was able to talk, they, I think they got her details but um, you know, then they sort of decided to move her to another boat, and um, and then they whisked her back to the hospital, hopefully. But um, yeah, I think they were pretty good, sort of helping to get her. But um, oh well, hopefully she'll be all right. So we don't actually know what happened to the woman afterwards. We hope that she was okay. There wasn't anything in the media. It was quite troubling to see um, someone like that in the water, but. We also learned a lot from that experience. The main thing was really how um, difficult it is to get someone back onto a boat. I mean, this was a very large boat, but it's, it would be difficult on any boat really. And we all know that, we've learned that, but actually to see it and to see how long she was in the water before they managed to get her back on board. And also that someone had to jump in and put their own life at risk. This has also made us um, reevaluate the equipment that we have or don't have on our boats for recovering someone who falls overboard. What kind of hoist you might use to put round someone, um, whereabouts in the boat you might bring them up. And um, even if they were conscious, they might not have the energy to climb up a ladder. So we're sorry if this blog was a little bit serious, but um, we wanted to share it um, hoping that it would be a valuable learning experience for everyone. Thank you.